This will be a big day for the inquiry uh, following a number of key ministers' testimony. We're expecting to hear from the Prime Minister later this afternoon. CTV's Mike LeCouture is standing by with a bit of a preview for us this morning. Mike, good morning to you. So first up, Karina Gould, why will she be testifying and what will we be hearing from other cabinet ministers really setting the stage for the Prime Minister this afternoon? Yeah, they really will. And Karina Gould starts us off as the uh, Minister of Democratic Institutions at the time of all of this alleged interference happening. So what did she know? We know that she had received multiple briefings from CSIS at the time, Canada's spy agency. Um, and what was she told? And then who did she tell about this? And I think that is part of the key message that a lot of the lawyers here will be getting at. We know that we will have also Bill Blair, who's the former public safety minister, and uh, you have Dominic LeBlanc, who is the current public safety minister, but he was also the head of the Privy Council at the time. So really, sort of the core group of ministers who were charged with trying to defend against foreign interference at the time. So key in what they will be asked is, what did they learn and who did they tell about it? Did they tell the prime minister? And the reason that's key is that yesterday, members of his inner circle, Katie Telford included, his chief of staff, of course, Brian Clow, the deputy uh, chief of staff, Jeremy Broadhurst, who was the director of the 2019 campaign for the Liberal Party, and then the one person who was left back in um, the prime minister's office at the time of the campaign, Patrick Travers. They all testified talking about intelligence and not to say that they were poking holes in it, but certainly saying that just because intelligence was transmitted to them, that it didn't mean that they took it as fact. Katie Telford mentioned that, look, there was often this sort of pushback mechanism on it, and they realized that they were able to have this challenge function. In one case, there was information brought to them by CSIS about a member of parliament. They challenged it, went back the next day. That person from CSIS came back and said, you know what, you're right. We're actually uh, going to reverse that type of information and say that that is not where we're going with this. So key in all of this is where the information went. And it's because of this 2013 CSIS briefing, Marcia, that we had heard about earlier this week that David Vigneault actually last week had mentioned that there was this briefing with the prime minister. There was this document that said that China uh, clandestinely um, um, tried to interfere, uh, clandestinely and deceptively tried to interfere uh, in both the 2019 and 2021 general elections, asserting that. Um, what we heard yesterday from members of the prime minister's office is essentially that those were speaking notes and that maybe they were meant to be delivered to the prime minister, but certainly they had never heard that information. And because those uh, briefings were done orally, so that will be the key Key that we'll hear from counsel here asking the Prime Minister, what did you know? When did you know it? And what did you do with that information if he was delivered that type of information? So we already, Mike, have a sense of the Prime Minister's position, do we not? Yeah, he has essentially said that foreign interference is something that Canada has been grappling with, but that the integrity of both the 2019 and 2021 elections was intact and say that they were conducted in a fair manner uh, and a free manner as well. We've also heard that from Nathalie de Rouen, um, who is his national security and intelligence advisor, and saying that no matter what has been happening in all of these reports that we are hearing at this commission, that yes, China has been interfering, but she really tried to delineate between interference and impact. And she was saying that there was no impact on the election, despite some of these reports of busloads of foreign students that were uh, sent to a nomination meeting for Handong, the Don Valley riding, um, and saying that even though these types of things uh, may have been alleged to happen, and of course there are questions around exactly uh, who was behind all of that, and that continues to be sorted out here, uh, all of the people that we are hearing from so far are saying that the integrity of those two elections remained intact. Okay, and we were just looking at live shots of Karina Gould, um, who is actually on a maternity leave, arriving for the uh, inquiry today. And the Prime Minister, uh, breezed by reporters just a few minutes ago, uh, Mike, he did not say anything when asked. Um, we'll hear, obviously, from him later this afternoon when he testifies. Before you go, I do also want to ask you, Mike, about... The commission recalling the CSIS director for mm -hmm. further cross-examination. Cross what could that mean? 
Yeah, it's interesting because I think it really sort of shows the depth to which that lawyers want to go back at the, the director of CSIS, David Vignon, to ask him about how some of those um, interjections and how some of those briefings were conducted, making sure, well, did you say this to the prime minister? It's on this briefing document. So I think a lot of people, media and those observers as well, take it to be fact or take it to be uh, that they were actually have told the prime minister about this. But if they were just briefing notes, or speaking points that perhaps never got transmitted to the Prime Minister, then that puts into doubt exactly what the Prime Minister may have known at the time. So that is why it's exceptional, uh, because they were supposed to wrap up testimony today. Uh, but this will not be the last day of the inquiry. We will hear from David Bignot on Friday, as a number of lawyers have those types of questions for him, exactly what he told the Prime Minister and what came off the page and maybe was delivered to the Prime Minister. All right, Mike, uh, just stand by. I believe we've got a live shot of Karina Gould just starting to get settled today. Um, we mentioned that her testimony, Mike, is, is really crucial because it was her job at the mm -hmm. time of Minister of Democratic Institutions to really curb meddling foreign interference in our elections. Yeah, that is part of her mandate as that minister. And of course, we had also heard uh, when CSIS testified, they showed a number of uh, sort of scheduling briefings for Karina Gould. Um, and so exactly what she was told in some of those meetings, I think, will be central to the questions here. Uh, what she knew, what uh, information was given to her. And then, of course, again, I, we keep coming back to it, but what did she do with that information? Uh, again, hearing from the members of um, not only the uh, council, um, this panel of five, so to speak, that was in charge of flagging uh, any type of interference during the election, but they would take the information and sometimes, not to say sit on it, but say, okay, let's see how this plays out and figure out whether or not it will actually have an impact in the election. So what she knew and what she did with that information, I think will be central to her questioning. Got it. Thanks so much for that, Michael Couture. Let's